Peggy 16. Hello and welcome to Battlefield Bootcamp. Once again, I'm joined by resident expert Toby Connolly, and today we're going to be discussing blowing up MCOMs. Isn't that right, Toby? Yeah, definitely. If you get to arm and blow up an MCOM, you can earn yourself a ton of XP, and it helps toward unlocking those assignments. Now, as you know, it's quite a good thing to do, as it is the main point of rush gameplay. But before we dive straight in, what should we do before we attack the MCOM? The first thing you do, really, is assess the situation. Before you even spawn in, you can have a look where your team are, where the enemy team are, and where the main focus of the battle is. And you can do all that on the spawn menu just by looking at the map on the right-hand side. OK, so we've identified that there's two MCOMs on the map. Do you loan Wolf it or do you go in as a squad? As much as I'd like to loan Wolf it, as most people know whilst playing Battlefield, it's best to work as a team. So realistically, you want your whole team, for me, pushing toward one objective at a time instead of splitting down both. If your whole team is attacking both MCOMs at once, they're much easier to defend, whereas if 12 people are pushing on one MCOM, it's a much more bigger challenge for them. So focus down one at a time and then you'll be successful. Yeah, definitely. But also sometimes it is about the element of surprise. For example, when I'm playing, if my whole team is attacking one MCOM and drawing a lot of fire, I like to sneak around the back of a silencer and arm the second one just to draw some defenders away. Would you feel this is a legitimate tactic? Definitely, most definitely. But it's all about what else is happening on the battlefield. If you can see that the entire enemy team is mostly drawn to that one, one MCOM, and you can safely sneak around, then by all means go for it. But if it's just going to lead to your untimely death, then it really might not be worth it and concentrate on what the rest of your team's doing as well. Like all games of Battlefield, communication is key, so how would you implement that in attacking an MCOM? Well, the first thing you should do, if you're not in a party chat with your friends or in a squad with your friends, is get onto the pause menu and look at the, the chat options there. You can speak to just your squad or speak to the entire team just by pressing the start button and it really does come in handy. Communication is key in any objective. So, we're attacking the MCOM, but of course the opposing team aren't going to just let us stroll up to it. What do we need to look out for and do to make sure we can physically get there in the first place? The first thing you should do is pick your route. Once you've decided on the best route to take in, then you need to worry about what equipment you're going to use. One of the highest things I recommend to use on rush mode is smoke. It provides great cover and stops people from seeing you and it can allow you to sneak in places without them even noticing really. They won't even be able to spot you through half the time. Make sure you've got the flak specialisation selected as well. This will make you less vulnerable to explosive damage so any crafty C4 or mines or claymores that are littered around by the MCOM station won't affect you as much. They won't completely save you but they'll, they'll protect you some degree. Before you go into the MCOM station, make sure you throw a grenade or two in there, or an M203, or anything explosive that you've got. This will get rid of the vast majority of any little surprises that are left for you and your team. OK, so we've got to the MCOM, it's armed, but of course the enemy aren't going to want it to stay that way. They're going to be doing their best to disarm it. What can we do to ensure it goes off? Firstly, and it sounds crazy to say it, but run away. Not all the way, but just step back away from the MCOM. Sitting on it, as a lot of people tend to do, is not going to keep it from being disarmed. You need to take a few steps back and get behind cover. Make sure you're covering any approach to it, but you can also see the MCOM itself. That way, anybody sneaking around, getting past you to try and disarm it, you can spot them, take them out. The approaches, they're not so important to shoot people out of. Spot. That's all you want to do for that, is just spot the players running in. Your team can deal with them, which will allow you to concentrate on the MCOM and making sure nobody disarms it and you can shoot anybody that tries. And you mentioned running away from the MCOM, the reason being a hell of a lot of grenades come your way from the defenders. Oh, yes. um, is there anything else we need to be aware of other than flying explosives? No, just explosives, 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 and um, probably some more explosives will come your way, which is why you need to do to take a few steps back. Specialisations will help you out on that one. So finally, for anyone who hasn't enjoyed Rush yet, what's a good map to start on? One of my favourites is probably Damavan Peak. Reason being, it's got a bit of everything. There's big open areas at the start, they get into more confined spaces toward the end. You start off with light vehicles like the Humvee, that then progresses to tanks. It's just got a bit of everything. It, the maps themselves allow you to flank, they allow you to attack from the front. It's also got the awesome base jump, which pretty much everybody loves. Myself included. Thanks for the tips today, Toby. What are we going to be looking at next on Battlefield Bootcamp? Next time we're going to look at one of my personal favourites, the engineer class, and how you can maximise the score and be the best help to your team. Well, that's guaranteed to be an explosive episode, so we'll see you then for Battlefield Bootcamp.